so like now look at that one back in 2015 producing this fucking pretty quality pretty quality raps you know what i mean so um you know with regards to that then and, and stepping out of high school and and then being pretty active who then were were you maybe doing shows with or you know involving yourself with locally um you know because i mean we talked about tim stowe or, or one yeah. before yeah um and that would have been around that time as well yeah man so who, who who did you start to you know connect with and do shows with or get in the studio with back then um that's crazy because i had a manager when i come out of um high school can i just ask sorry to interject you see so you just well, just fucking strolled out of high school gates graduation <laughs> some guy just walks up and be like hey buddy <laughs> <laughs> you're up pretty sick i want you oh, i'm a manager ass <laughs> yeah. H- how'd you get a manager so quick um it was actually my cousin knew someone who was connected through like sony and things like that um and he introduced me to her and she just wanted to wanted to put me on at the time but it, things didn't go as planned we'll get into that later on if we if you want if we need to or whatever but fuck we're here to be positive but (laughs) fuck her (laughs) bless up anyway bless up anyway (laughs) um so basically um i got in the studio with with tim stowe i had a session with him i remember nino brown rolling through that was my first time meeting nino which was how how was that would that be a bit crazy it was was dope because i used to buy blazing i used to buy those cds yeah Yeah, yeah, so it it was cool to meet nino um so i worked with tim stowe i worked with Simon Simon Cohen from Studios 301. Yep. Um, he's a big engineer there. Um, so I was getting studio time there and shit. Like my manager was was providing all of that. And then I had my first um, show in Darling Harbour at a place that was called Margaritaville. Um, okay. I don't know what it's called now, but it's like, yeah, whatever. How like, was that? Yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. Like I got up on stage and was just like in my element, like to be out there finally, like, you know, because... I've always wanted to just get up on stage in front of random so people. Was know? that one of your first experiences on stage or what? No, because I was doing talent quests and shit at, at school. Yep. So, I, I was, and my talent quests at school were like, there was like a thousand something people that... Yeah, because you got to... Like even school, if people didn't yeah. want to be there, they had to be they there. They had to be it. there, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. like I was doing shows, not shows, but I was performing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, had yeah. the stage Cutting presence, your teeth kind of, sort yeah. of thing, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So... Um, when I got on into the club scene, I was more or less excited. You know what I mean? I was mm. like, yeah, yeah, this is like, this is what I want to do. And this will lead to this opportunity. And, you know, like, so when I got up there, I was really excited, man. Like, that's, that was me out of high school, like, just doing different shows at different clubs and even emceeing. I was doing some emceeing here and there, like, jumping on the mic. Yeah, put your hands up, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> ladies. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> one yeah, time for the ladies that, those ones are dangerous <laughs> yeah, you know and then like you know be faithful comes on by fat, Gan- fat man scoop the whole fucking place yep. shuts down you know the vibes that's right <laughs> so that's a couple of producers but were there any like particular artists that started you know did you have any early collabs or was it mainly you working on you on yourself no nah, man i didn't have um i actually didn't have any collabs really to be honest i was sort of working on myself it was like an, i was like trying to develop myself um Hence why you see in 2015, in 2016, some of those videos where I'm just spitting like lyrical shit. I worked a lot on my pen game mm-hmm. after high school, you know, like it was something that I was like, no, I need to perfect this now, you know what I mean? So um, I didn't really work with a lot of people, like besides producers and, and doing shows and things like that. Um, but yeah, man, like it was really about me perfecting the craft kind of thing, you know? Yeah, true. Um Tell me about then, it's funny that you say pen game thing, right? Because one thing from me, like, what, what, like you know, you can rap, you know, maybe that comes from those early influences um, with regards to, um, you know, listen to M and, 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 and you know, those experiences of, of, you know, rap being proper constructive verses. Mm. But I also noticed that there's an element of, you know, what you do, you know, now that's probably a little bit more simplified, mm. not to write it off. No, 100%. Right? Um, and it's funny because, you know, uh, truth be told, I was only more aware of you in the last 12, 18 months mm. of, of like what you're doing, you know, started coming up in my feeds. Um, I ha- happened to have a random session with Pax and, you know, mm. he, he, he was big up in you as well. But the funny thing was as well, he was showing me, 
other stuff of yours and then and like so he'd play it and he'd be like oh, i'll work with inferno i'll be like oh yeah mad fuck yeah see inferno doing his thing and mm. you know it's like it looks it looks familiar to what's going on at the minute yeah and he was sort of like no 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 like let me let me show you this yeah so he would play like your rap shit yeah y- you know what i mean and right. and and see so like so it's like uh he was sort of lending on like yeah it's like it's a calculated decision like inferno's pointing out not to shortchange what you're doing yeah because it's fucking dope but what I'm more saying is, is that like you know you've got the capacity to do both simultaneously. Correct, so, yeah. so how how does that feel as an artist, and consciously sort of turning around and being like, nah, because there is still certainly an art in the, you know, in 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 the you know simplifying and still having that impact. Hundred percent. So how do you feel like, like as an artist, like making that conscious decision of of sort of making that type of music, um, and still f- ha- being able to rap? <laughs> yeah, I feel like. Um as an artist, like, what I learned as well throughout the years of, like, writing or whatever, like, just being in in the industry was you need to be versatile. Um, mm. And v- versatility to me is, like, is very, very important because it's like, yeah, yeah, I can spit some hard shit, but I'm going to do some soft shit too, you know what I mean? Yep. And, and I'm going to dumb it down for people that don't really, um, you know, like, can't really catch the bars, I'm saying, because at th- I'm not saying, like, <clears throat> you know like for the for the wider audience that caters to you know what i mean like and it's like people know i can spit so i don't need to continually prove myself yeah you yeah, yeah. I mean? so you're beyond that sort of just yeah. constant flex like you're in that d- different mode of writing that's right that's yep. right and and the way i write now is like just based on how how i'm feeling or whatever you know if pax is cooking up and i'm in i'm feeling a certain way i'm gonna just write it but i'm not gonna write it like real complex so people don't resonate with it you know what i mean like because yeah. i feel like if you write something too complex people is just gonna be like yeah yeah the flow is cool and not understand what i'm saying you know what i mean yeah 100%. so that's where i was like i need to sort of all right i'm gonna keep my lyrical shit for like my one takers where i spit on a famous beat or something or mm-hmm. if i get up um you know on a, on a radio or something i'm gonna just go hard you know what i mean but when it comes to like songs and things like that like I feel like I gotta sort of dumb it down with that whole lyrical content and the punchlines yeah. and shit. You know what I mean? Like I, I try and put little ones here and there, but things you can understand. You know, like bro, so into you by fucking fabulous. Mm. Like that's a that's, perfect example. That's basic, right? But if you're an MC and you listen to that track, you're like, <laughs> this is an MC yes. writing a a fucking a love song. like a love song. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Next, next question. <laughs> You're gonna love this one because it comes up all the time. I'm sure. All right. Wait, can you guess? Don't look. No, I can't guess. It. You can't guess. No. What is Come it? on, man. What are you gonna ask me, bro? Okay, ready. So you know how you know the accent. Ah, <laughs> oh, you know what? Here I want to address go. this. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, this, wait let me so. ask the question. Yeah, though, because, ask it, please. Because <laughs> in a freestyle that you did in July. Uh huh. You actually addressed it in there. You've got fam. And I know I spoke to this because I'm a bit of a, an advocate for, you know, because I rapped in an American accent for 18 years. Fuck, right? right. Yeah. And, and then only started to um, change in the last, shit, maybe five or six. Yeah? Yeah, maybe about. Um, no, probably more like four or five. So I've only been rapping like in my natural accent for five years. Mm-hmm. Right? So I actually understand. Like, yeah. To a sure. degree, right? Or well, well, I've got my reason, whatever. Yeah. You know, but for you, A, you've you've got, you know, I think you said your dad's from um, Pittsburgh. Yes. Um, you know, in the freestyle. Um, but, you know, obviously you're going to cop a little bit of criticism. Of course. You know, from uh, the motherfucking haters. Of course. I mean? But, you know, for you, um, because one thing that I did notice as well, and even in that freestyle, you know, you've got the capacity to do it in your in your voice. It's mm-hmm. not like you're, f- you know, because back in the day, I'll be honest with you, bro, and you, you wouldn't really know this as much. It was so heated, the Australian accent thing, mm. that people would be like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, you're faking the funk. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? And then yeah. they'd fucking do a breakdance, fucking spin move on their head, and then do a fucking <laughs> B-boy to pose it, and you'd be like, fuck, I don't even know, I'm just trying to rap, you know? Like, <laughs> like anyway, um, so you know what was for you um you know what what is the what is the decision behind that and you know is there elements of um you know you changing it up or or you know like where where are you at with that at the moment and so 
the accent, man, like, <clears throat> like, like you said, you were rapping in an Australian accent for, a, I mean, sorry, American accent for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And th like, obviously that comes from American influence and things like that, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah. So my dad grew up in, in Harrisburg, mm. um, in Pennsylvania, like he went to University of Pittsburgh or, or whatever. That's why I say Pittsburgh as well. Um, but so he grew up in PA and so what people don't know is that I'm actually half American. So mm. I've got American passport and an Australian passport, which like, I'm not saying like, oh, that's why I do it because that's not the main reason why I do it. Mm -hmm. But that's just an element that I've got as well, you know, because mm. I grew up in a very Americanized culture at home. Yep. Um, so with that um, comes obviously the American influence and um, discovering Australian hip hop in the later stages of me listening to hip hop. And that's no disrespect, of course, to no, the Australian, no, no. you know, you because I, I love it. Australian hip hop. Yep. And to be honest with you, um, I was told when, when I've graduated high school to switch it up um, many, many times by, um, you know, some cats that were in the scene and things like that. And I was just like, I tried to. Yeah, yeah. I tried to. I worked, tried to work on it for a good five or six months. And it was just like, it just, I wasn't feeling it. You know what I mean? It was yeah. something that wasn't coming natural to me. It was something that was forced. And it was, it was just like, man, I can't do something if I'm not fucking with it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I'm not fucking with how I'm doing it, then I'm not going to do it at all. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And obviously, you know, just going back to how long I've wanted to do hip hop and things like that is more or less like, I'm not trying to fake the funk as in a, like doing the American accent thing. That's just what comes natural to me. You know what I mean? And that's just, <clears throat> like to me, the way I see it is, if it fucking slaps, it slaps. You know yeah, hundred percent, I mean? bro. But at the end of the day, of course, like Australians and things like that, they're very, they got a lot of pride, and they want to see you repping the, the the Aussie scene. You know, like repping with the Aussie accent and everything like that, which is yeah. cool. But at the end of the day, I'm still repping Australia, even though I'm repping, even though I've got an American kind of like, style whatever, you know yeah, like yeah. well so. i think that look some some things sometimes and i feel bro to be really fucking blunt with you like and, and i've said fuck i've said this stuff these poor guys hear me say it a million times but you know like there's an element of australian hip-hop that i can't fuck with you know and it's the it's real staccato like it's really like really like on the beat it's like two like da, 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 you know what I mean? yeah, no, yeah absolutely. like one thing for the american stuff that always like resonated with me was the flow there's musicality mm. to the to to the vocal right mm, mm. um which i think that even with and this is just me telling you from an outsider standpoint you know i've heard you flow australian or mm. i don't even want to say australian because that even that's bullshit because in southwest or western sydney or even in sydney like we've certainly got our own identity yeah you, you can go anywhere in Australia and say, I'm from Western Sydney, and they've got a vision of what you're supposed to... Do you see what I'm saying? So it's the same way if you're from New York or if you're from LA. Yeah. People have a preconceived idea of what 100%. that's supposed to sound like. So yeah. you know how to flow in your from what I've heard already. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's not that it's not there. It's just like a, a choice sort of Correct, not to yeah. use it all the time. Because right. I will go into this later, but you do choose to use it in certain times or elements you know what i yeah, mean which is sure. which is crazy bro and that, that's big ups as well to not even shy completely away from it is yeah, to be like sure. yo when the time's right and we'll talk about when the fucking time is really right you know later on yeah but you know it warrants you you know changing up you know what you're doing yeah sure um so that's hectic man uh, and it's good to hear it's good to hear from like you know one of the homies that you know is new new word to the scene as mm. well do you know mm -hmm. So lastly, and you know, I go back to what I said at the start, man. What was what was dope is, um, man, I really appreciate. You know, the good thing for me about doing something like this is that you know it piques the interest of you know people that I do want to to see it. You know, and people mm. like yourself. And so you know, it's it's a uh, it's a big um, uh, compliment when I have someone that does fucking quality shit such as yourself to to turn around and hit me up, and 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 say, hey, man, I'd love to be involved. And for and sure. And not just come to me like, because look, truth be told, a lot of people hit me up to come onto this podcast. I can imagine, yeah. But to be frank, 
it's like part of me goes like first of all i have cunts that hit me up for the fucking podcast and i'm like do you even fucking watch a podcast cunt because like i, I don't know like i can't talk i'm not going to be able to fucking talk to you for an hour and a half yeah if like you, if for you whatever know. reason yeah, right exactly but you know what i really respect and i love dude, you hit me up you're like yo i've got something important and you know you obviously you know enough about me that you knew that it would probably resonate 100%. and, and, and it'd be something that i'd love to talk about um and that is that is mental health you know mm-hmm. Um, and you you did a project and you got you brought it. We're gonna be we're gonna be playing it, so we're gonna go out on it. See, um, but you know, it was in the interest of are you okay? Sorry, what was the number again? One three one one three triple one four one 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 three triple one four. Um, and and it, it it's about you know mental health and and and, and you know struggles and and like the, but the fact that you reached out to me about it, um, sort of you know like i was like yo that's that's good because then i'm fucking repping how i'm supposed to be repping as well and 100%. we obviously share um you know the same interests you know about it but <clears throat> tell me what inspired you know this short film and shout out to cern yeah uh, as Put, well putting that vision together man fucking nuts hectic nuts, right yeah but um, but but tell me about it, bro. What what inspired it? What, you know, was it something you could do because you happened to have some downtime? Um, you know, uh, w- what made you put all that artist integrity that essentially you could have been putting into your music, mm. but then to also put something into a, you know a project like this? Mm. You know, um, to be honest, man, like it wasn't something that I've I've recently wanted to do. Something that I've always wanted to do was touch on this subject um and it, those two tracks are from last year yep so we made those tracks i've got maybe four or five tracks for mental health yep. um but it was sort of like we'll pick the two that are probably going to be most relatable to people um obviously because of the whole relationship thing and i know a lot of things <coughs> a lot of things can trigger your me- your mental health and 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 you know um can make you question yourself and all that sort of thing um but one thing that I gathered was one thing that can really trigger people's mental health is relationships. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bad relationships, toxic relationships, things like that. You can take the, the songs in any sort of way you, you really want, right? Yeah, Cause yeah. the whole message of it is you're not alone. Um, you know, if you're going through something mentally, um, but the, the, the inspiration of that was just seeing, you know, going through bad mental times, you know, as a young and, like I'm not gonna make this a sorry story or anything like that, but no, you're you know, fucking you're standing here where you are now as, as a result of it. You know, it's obviously formed formed you as well for sure. You so, are. you know, just going through some shit mentally when I was a young and almost giving up on on what I love, bro. Yeah, like too yeah. with with the whole music thing and um the the whole relationship thing. Like going through different relationships where it was just like, fuck this shit. You know mm. what I mean? Like you, you sort of. You you get you go through a stage where it's like fuck the world, mm. you know. Like um, going through that, seeing my homies go through, you know, different things where, you know, I hope this doesn't trigger anyone, but they get suicidal, man. You know, like and Straight up. seeing my seeing my own father and my own immediate family go through heavy depression, bro. Um, it really made me stop and say, you know, fuck this, like. Like this isn't what life is, you know. Like not to go to go through this bad shit. Yeah, it's it's a lesson, right? And it, and it's what strengthens you mentally. But um, if I can use the platform I've got to not just show off my fucking double entendres yeah, and yeah, my yeah. bars and shit, it's more or less like, all right, you you read my bio, you see the 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 fact that I'm saying I want to make an impact, a positive impact on the Australian community. It's like, okay, I've had mental health tracks in the bag um and i just sort of went you know what better way to to show people that they're not alone in any sort of circumstance whatever you're going through and putting this project out was the main inspiration for it yeah you know what i mean Straight up, man. um with the whole are you okay release it was like i know september is like mental health month mental health awareness month it should be every fucking month to me um, you know, yeah, like a lot of people say that. I yeah, mean, it's like always good to spread the awareness. Hundred percent. You know, but yeah, during I mean, during like the, the so with the whole are you okay? It was like originally I was actually looking for a partnership 
yep. I wanted um, I wanted to partner with Are You OK to sort of release it on a platform that obviously people rely on. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, um, because you know it's all well and good to release it through my socials and and have people resonate with it through that, which has been really great because I, you know, a lot of people have messaged me telling me that you know I've been helping them and things like that, which you know to me is what it's all about. You know, 100%, yeah. um, I originally was looking for a partnership with Are You Okay, but they didn't really have the capacity and things like that, which is understandable. Um, but I feel like I got the message across either way. You know? <laughs>